Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagaris, and today I'm going to be showing you guys a deck for the seasonal mode. And for those of you guys who are new and don't know what seasonal is, seasonal is a special game mode that changes every month, so every season, and it has a special rule set. So for this month, the season of the elves, Whenever you play a unit from your hand, you will also play a unit with the same provision cost from your deck. And your starting deck is doubled in size at the start to match that. So every card that you have in your deck is duplicated. And then when you play a card, you'll play one of the same provision costs. So let's get into the deck builder and I'll show you guys the deck I have for you. Okay, so here we are in the deck builder and we're going to be running a Northern Realms list, a mobilization list. And that's because we have duplicated our deck. This ability allows us to play a copy of an allied unit from our deck, boost it by two and give it zeal. And we can actually use this on gold cards in this game mode because we have duplicated them. We have two copies of every gold card. So this makes this such a powerful ability. We have a purification and a boost as our stratagem. Uh, this gives us ability to protect one of our engines because this deck has a lot of cards which do things every turn. And it also gives us removal for things like locks. Uh, then we have Yennefer Conjurer. And bear in mind, we only have one of a 10 provision card, which means that when you're mulliganing, make sure you don't have two Yennefers. Otherwise, you won't be able to pull a card with the same provision cost from your deck. Uh, she, every turn, will damage the highest enemy unit or units by one. So we're going to be damaging every turn. We have Reynard at nine provisions, who's going to boost adjacent units by one. And whenever we play a unit, he's going to boost it by one. So you can see every turn, we're going to be then boosting things by one. We have Shani. Uh, she has the order to give an allied unit vitality for one turn and also one armor if she's inspired so if she has uh, a boost herself she'll do, do uh vitality for two turns and she has charges and we can actually give her charges with some of our other cards on the deck uh, in uh, that, that, that yeah cards in the deck so for example we have the uh aratusa adepts they have zeal um if we can control a mage and then we play them on the range row and they will give one charge to an allied unit uh, every turn so each turn we can give a charge to a, another unit. Similarly, we have Priscilla. She gives a unit one charge. Um, and if she's inspired, she gives a unit two charges. So if we boost her with Reynard, we can then give Shani two char charges every turn. And then you can kind of see where this is going. It's got a knock-on effect. We have Selkirk, who will play in the melee row. Um, and we can use him to duel an enemy. So we've got him for removal. We have Neneke, who has four charges and can boost a unit by one. So she can trigger the inspired effects on these cards by boosting them. Then we have a Botchling. Every allied turn on turn end, damage the highest enemy unit by one. We can also transform this into a Lubberkin, which means it'll boost our lowest unit by one. So that means it doesn't really get in the way of Yennefer. Black Rayla, uh, play a uh, damage unit by one. If she's inspired, you damage a unit by two. And this again happens every turn. Then we have Francis uh, Bedlam. Every allied turn on turn end, boost the lowest unit in your hand by one. So we're then boosting more stuff per turn. Viesagotta, play it on the range road, boost the unit by one. Gain one charge whenever you play. Either player plays a card. So every turn when we're playing cards, he's getting more charges and boosting more friends. Anna Strenga. Every allied turn on turn end, boost the unit to the right by one. If she's inspired, so if she's boosted, we boost adjacent ones to either side by one. So you can kind of see what I mean by this deck having a lot of engines that do things every turn. We have Blue Stripe Commandos. And these are a little bit tricky because obviously you could play a Blue Stripe Commando and pull another Blue Stripe Commando from the deck. But either way, even if you do that, you then can summon two more Blue Stripe Commandos out of the deck. Um, so they're quite good in that regard. Alternatively, we might pull a Temerian Drummer. Every allied turn on turn end, boost the unit to the right by one. So we can use this to protect units and gain power every turn. Aratusa Adept, like I said, gives charges. Clear an Arbalist, damage unit by one. And every time we play a card with orders, which you may have noticed we have a few of, uh, they will also gain a charge. Trident Infantry, whenever this unit receives a boost, we then damage a random enemy unit by one. And we have a lot of boosts in this deck. Kedweni Sergeant boosts an allied unit by one um, and has two charges. So this is another thing we can give charges to. Uh, and then last but not least, we have one siege support. If we play it in the melee row, we'll give one charge to an ally. If we play it in the range row, we can boost an allied unit by one. And we can also have the order to give an allied unit zeal. So we can apply zeal to one of our cards in the deck. Actually, Vess also does that. I think I missed her. When we play her, we damage an enemy unit by two. And she has an order to also give an allied unit zeal, which means that we can trigger orders on the turn that we play cards. So, quite a uh, powerful deck in terms of things happening per turn, as long as you can get your cards to stick. And I do feel like in the current uh, seasonal mode, it's quite likely that that will happen. 
So that's the deck. If you like the video, maybe hit that like button. And without further ado, I'm going to jump into a game now and I'll showcase this deck in action for you. Okay, so here we are in the mulligan. You want to make sure you only have one copy of your blue stripes and only one copy of Yennefer. Beyond that, you know, you're more or less okay with whatever. We have a lot of um, Kidwini sergeants. We don't really need this. We want to find some more gold cards. So I think what we're going to do is we'll mulligan a couple of the sergeants. Oh, and we got two commandos. That's really annoying because it means that they're kind of tricky to play this turn. Especially as if we play the drummer, we may pull another one out of our list. So kind of an unfortunate hand, especially given how much gold is in here. Um, it may, however, just be the case that we want to get play three cards and get rid, bleh, get rid, get out of this round as, as quickly as possible. So he can damage unit by one and he can do that three times. So he could try and kill our Yennefer with that. So maybe we don't play that this turn. In which case, what we're going to do is we're just going to look to play these five provision cards um, and get some bodies on the board really so let's play the arbalist and you can see we got a second arbalist so we'll pop that down Give as well and then end turn unfortunately our opponent can kill one of these but i do feel like in this round we're just playing some bronze to kind of clear out the deck a wee bit he's got his onslaught leader ability so he can damage an enemy unit by one every other turn and like i said he can kill one of these which is fine we're not too worried about it the thing is, if we've got two drummers as well, so if we play one drummer, we're going to pull one blue stripe, which we don't really want to do. Not quite the ideal scenario for us. From white sands to snow. Honestly, we just got kind of not the best starting hand. And considering how many cards in there are in our deck, it's quite unlikely that this will happen. So he pulled the prize winning cow. We can just kill that with this, like so. We'll then play our Kidweni. Um, and because this has orders, we've got two of them. This will then give him a charge. And then we'll boost him up to protect him. Um, I think we'll also boost this one at least once. Maybe we'll boost him twice, I think. Because we can give these guys charges. Uh, and then we will shoot the... Uh, it doesn't overly matter. The Caravan Vanguard, I suppose. And then end our turn. At this point, we're not looking to play too much. We could play Naneki. We've got nine um, provisions here, so we'll pull a nine provision card. And you do want to think about, like, what from my list is that going to be pulling? Um, you know, which of my other cards are nine provisions? Things like Selkirk, for example, are nine provisions. I think Reynard also nine provisions. So that's the kind of things you're going to be seeing there. We could also go for the double Yennefers um, if we want to push this round. I think the problem with pushing this round is just that the hand is not ideal. Um... We could also play the Siege Supports. We'll get both of them out because we've only got a couple four provision cards. Although, actually, no, that's a lie because I think Tridems are also four provision. So maybe... Yeah, maybe we just play the Siege Support now um, and see what we get. If we put it in the melee, we can give a unit a charge. So let's do that. We'll do this. There's the Tridem. Uh, so we'll play that. We'll boost him by one. And then we do kind of need to kill this and create. So let's just shoot him for now. And try and whittle him down slowly. And then when we play Neneki, we can then put the boots onto the Tridam and shoot our opponent, which is pretty nice. The only thing we have to be a little bit wary of is our opponent getting far far ahead of us. But I, I do feel like we can probably play both the Nenekis this turn and then kind of see what the situation is. Because he hasn't really committed too much either, which is kind of annoying. Okay, so we can also give a unit um, zeal. So that means we can trigger its deploy on the turn that we play it. The thing is, playing the blue strike, there's no point in giving it a zeal. So let's play Neneki. And we got Shani. So she gives an allied unit vitality for one turn. Um, and she's got charges. And if she's inspired, so if she's boosted, then she can give two turns. So we'll play her as well. She'll get shot, but that's okay. Um, so then we give her a boost, like so. Then we give her zeal. Uh, then we'll put this on... We put it on the Tridam or Naneki. I mean, we don't have a way of giving charges at the moment, so let's put it on the Tridam. Uh, that will boost him a few times. Like so. Uh, we'll shoot this boat. And you can see suddenly the gap has gotten just a little bit bigger. And every turn that that Tridam is boosting, he's also shooting our opponent. So we are getting a little bit closer. And again, um, when we play a unit with orders, we can then kill the prize winning cow. Although he is going to be able to deal three damage here. 
Oh, we have another in the Neke, so it doesn't even matter if this one dies. And he's floating the charges. Okay, so let's play our other Neneki. We got another, uh, we got a Priscilla, so we can give a unit charges. And we can give her two charges if she's boosted. So if we play her on the back row, she'll get shot and then boosted. But then we can boost her once with this. And then we can give charges to Neneki as well. Uh, we're going to shoot this. Oh, it's so nearly dead. Maybe we'll hit it. Come on. Wrong target. Try again. Wrong target. Try again. Oh, unfortunate. And then end our turn. And now it actually doesn't even matter if we end up playing blue stripes. We're so far ahead at this point that we're in a pretty nice position. Oh, I forgot to shoot the chort. Oh, Francesca, where are you playing at? I am dumb. Jaggeris. <laughs> my name is Francesca, in case you guys didn't know that. It's on my Twitter, so it's not like a big secret. So he's probably going to shoot Priscilla. Oh, he didn't. He killed Neneki. That's kind of silly, I think. I mean, I guess he can kill the other Neneki, but then I can put charges on the Kedwenis anyway. Okay. Oh. Well, that's cute. Hmm. So it may be just that we should pass here. We could play Yen and Thin Yen. We could play the drummer. Um... I don't know, man. Maybe we play the drummer. We're going to pull a um, commando if that's the case. And then we can maybe try and thin one of them, at least. I want to push the round a wee bit more. If I'm honest with you. Uh, so let's shoot this boat. This boat's been irritating me. No end. Then we will give Shani a charge, which does the vitality. We'll put the vitality on the commando and then we'll end our turn. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Okay. So unfortunately, because this is damage, we're only going to get one charge, but she's boosted, so we're still going to give two vitality, which doesn't seem too bad. The problem is if we trigger this, we still have to play two cards. Like, we have to still play a card. But then if we can take the round in one card, I don't hate, like, playing the commando. It's kind of awkward. Our hand is very awkward. Semper Fi! So let's Death do that. Um, let's just shoot some of these. Kill some things. Then do that. And then do that. And then end our turn. And like we're still close enough. We can catch him in, you know, one card if necessary. So I feel like we're actually all right to keep pushing this round. The Tridam is putting in a lot of work, even though we're only playing one card per turn. It's not awful. Okay, so let's play the drummer. Again, the, the gap isn't so big that we can't catch him let's with one more card. Right. Oh, I've got another drummer. Of course I've got four right. drummers. I'm so stupid. I was like, oh, the drummers aren't going to pull anything. But of course there's, there's four drummers in the deck. There's not two drummers in the deck. Oh, Francesca, you silly goose. Again again. I'll give this a charge. Um, then we'll do that to get more shots out. I mean, I'm a little bit nervous because I've made such a big target that, you know, Mokvog, for example, is going to be kind of problematic. But now I think we are ahead because at the end of the turn, all of these guys are going to boost. So unfortunately, we actually killed things because we enabled his, his Freya. But she brooks no insult. The issue that we have to a certain extent is that... We've held Yennefer for such a long time. Um, but again, I still think we're we're fine here, right? We play the, the uh, blue stripe. We get another boosty friend. There he is, within the deck. Um, is there anything I really need to be boosted? I guess we can protect the Neneke. Then we'll give her some more charges. I don't really want to spread out the vitality necessarily on this turn because of the situation. Like, in some ways, I think we're better to actually boost other targets, just so that we're getting more points per turn. So let's boost uh, Priscilla. And then we get one, two, three. Yeah, we should be ahead here, I think. Because of all the drummers as well. Is it even worth doing the maths? I'm like, nah, we're ahead. <laughs> so you can see, even though we had a really kind of poor quality starring hand, we're actually in a very strong position here. Like, I mean, we're getting one, four points per turn. 
five points per turn because of the damage. You know? So let me see. So we are getting one, two, three, four points this turn. So, I mean, I guess we just play the Yennefer. I know that, like, we should have played her much earlier, but arguably it doesn't even matter because we're going to be ahead on even, and I think that's more important. You know, I don't really even need to do all this, but given the state of the hand, we'll just do this. And, like, considering I made some misplays, right? And had a uh, bad starting hand, you can see just how powerful this list is because we just completely overloaded our opponent with um engines you know and we're going to draw into lots of strong cards like we, we didn't play any reynards we didn't play any botchlings we can pull a second botchling out the deck our two's adept actually gives us charges which is nice but we don't have cards which need charges i'm going to mulligan this as well and we're just gonna pass here because we want a long round right the whole point of our cards is that they do better in a longer round so what we'll do is we'll just pass and our opponent has to play something and then in the next round you know, hopefully, if we can, if we can draw Vyasagata, for example, I think we're pretty much guaranteed to win because you can't really counter two Vyasagatas, and our opponent doesn't seem to have much removal. So yeah, it's been an interesting game. Terrible starting hand, made some misplays, still won round one on even, <laughs> and then uh, managed to get some. Oh, there's a Vyasagata. Okay, nice. There's another Botchling, and a Shani. So we don't have a way of giving her charges, so maybe the Shani's not so useful. Okay, so Selkirk, that's not too bad. And this is how many provisions, because we want to make sure we do still have eight provision cards in the deck. I think we do. I'm, hope I'm hoping that we haven't thinned all of our cards and these aren't going to pull anything. The nines might be a slight problem, like the Reynards, to be honest with you. Oh, these are really annoying. So I oh, what we could do, the other thing we could do is we could leader the Selkirk. It depends, like, if we play Selkirk, are we going to pull another Selkirk? No, so we pulled Priscilla. Give a unit one charge. Give a unit two charges instead. So she's going to get shot. So we may as well play her in the back row. These boats are really annoying. So let's play our leader on Selkirk. Although I just realized he's going to get shot twice, isn't he? So he's not going to we're not going to be able to fight with him any- Oh no, we are. We've got- we've got things. So we'll kill one of these. And then we've got a second one. We've got Priscilla that does charges, but we don't actually have anything that needs charges. So that's slightly annoying. Like we didn't- Oh well, Viasagata has charges actually. So if we play Viasagata, that's pretty good. So... Let's play this. Critical thinking. And then we got Vess. So we can give something zeal. And we can also deal some damage. Then we'll boost this a couple times. Then we'll give this a charge. And we'll boost this as well. I think we're in a pretty solid position. We have a card up. We didn't get double Vyasagata, so we can't just do nonsense with that. But we went for Selkirk instead. Boost off by one for each damage unit. But we only have one damage unit. That would have been better in the first round for him. Okay, he's played some six point piggies. And every time he plays a card, we boost. And then I think we want to play the Botchling next. Or we can play Reynard actually. Let's play Reynard because we can put him here and boost the Visigotta. Exceptional. Okay, and we can give an allied unit vitality. This go, we'll play her on the front row. And then see, she got boosted. Um, and then because of this, we, we put her on the front row so we can trigger it now. So we can put Vitality on Vyasagata. And then we'll give him a charge. And then we'll boost Reynard. And then we'll boost Selkirk. I mean, this would actually, if we had, um, Vyasagard in this deck as well, it would probably work quite well. And you can kind of just see the sheer nonsense of this deck now. Because we're playing so many cards, if you can get a Vyasagata to survive, then you're basically guaranteed to win. Thunderbolt. It's not going to cut it, buddy. Okay, so let's play this. And now this is boosted. So this is actually also giving two charges. So we either give two charges to this, but actually I think we give two charges to Shani, right? Because she's going to be giving vitality for multiple turns. 
So if we do that... I mean, maybe we should have put one on Visigotha, but whatever. I'm just a little bit nervous about... Um, Igni, I guess? Or like, Scorch, but... Nah, I don't think it's going to be an issue. We're on 47 and he's on 21. And he has one card left. So we don't even need to play these. Like, we absolutely dominated that second round. And even though we were a card up, we won two cards up <laughs> by quite a lot of points. So hopefully you're starting to see the sheer power of this strategy and of this deck. Uh, but let's jump into another game and I'll showcase this deck once again for you guys. Okay, so we're against monsters and blood scent this time. Um, in terms of mulligan, again, we've got one Yennefer, which is fine. We're looking for one... Well, actually, actually not having any six provisions is good because we can pull one with the drummer. Um, I think we're going to mulligan one of the sergeants. And there's a second drummer. Mm, it's okay. I mean, we can do some cool things with Anna. Maybe throw the sergeant again. Try damn. And then I'll throw the siege support. Yeah, I like the sand. So we go first. Um, so if we really wanted to push our opponent, we would open with Yennefer. Because it kind of makes life awkward. Alternatively, what we could do is open with the drummer. And we should get a target for it, right? We're likely to get a commando. So let's play the drummer. And then place the commando next to him. And then end our turn. Because on the next turn, we then should be able to thin all of our commandos from the deck. And then we can also place the Tridam then next to the drummer and get a little engine on the go. And really try and win this round with bronze cards if we can. Because we do have very synergistic bronze cards. So I think we are in a strong position to do that. Let's see what our opponent wants to do. Portal. Interesting. So I guess you could have double portal, right? Okay, so he wants these to be, so he's put bleeding on them, which is fine. Okay, so let's trigger this first and foremost and thin these out the deck. There we go. Play the Tridam here. We've got a siege support, and if we play it on melee, we can give a charge. If we play it on range, we can boost an allied unit. So let's play it on range and boost the Tridam. And you see, the thing with the portal is, like, it's not played another card, right? He's played the 13 provision card, which means he has his second portal in hand. Uh, so that's interesting. And we can actually purify this as well with the uh, stratagem. So let's do that and stop the bleeding from occurring. And now we also then have a zeal, should we need it. If there's anything we want to, like, trigger on the turn that we play it. Black Railer could be a good option. It kind of depends how much of a problem we feel like these are. And actually, if we play Anna in here, she's going to get boosted and then she's going to boost him every turn. So let's play Anna. And we got another Anna. So let's play this Anna here. Oh wait, this one won't be boosted though. Unless we play it here. Let me think. Is there a way we can boost it? Yeah, I think there's a way we can boost it, right? We can we can boost it with um Shani? Yeah, we can boost it with Shani, that's fine. So let's end our turn. We're really far ahead here. Even though he's got all these engines that are gaining, you know, one point per turn, it's like we're in a really strong position. So I guess if we play Shani, we can trigger her with um the siege support this turn so we would play shani on the back row boost her and then boost the anna and then that will boost the tridam twice every turn which is kind of insane i'm not really worried about the gherkins i know they're called garkane i always call them gherkin for some reason okay i mean actually this is also a good round honestly for yennefer because he's got the gherkins boosting every turn we're gonna see a decent amount of power off of them so maybe we just want to do that. But I mean, we're that far ahead. Let's let's play the Yennefers. We'll give one of them zeal. And then do that. 
And then we're basically denying his engines every turn. Although unfortunately we hit the we hit this gherkin here. Never mind. I think the double Yennefer is just really powerful. Like it's kind of gonna force him out of the round. Maybe we play Vest next. Maybe we, you know, I do want to get these boosted though. So maybe we play the, the Shani. And then see what happens. Oriana. Oriana's annoying. In that like, obviously she's going to boost every turn and it's going to deny. Osril's not good. There's no, gr that's a one point play. <laughs> that's cute. That is a one point play. We also need to be a bit careful about the space on the row. Like if we play Black Rayla then we obviously are slightly in a more awkward position. But I think I want to play... I mean, we could play a drummer. I think I want to play... I mean, if we play a drummer, we'll get another drummer, right? I think I want to play Shani. We got two Shani's. Let's play those. Let's click these. And then end our turn. I mean, he's got a lot of bleeding, and he's getting points per turn from Oriana, I guess. But, I mean, we have then Vitality, so we can actually counter a lot of bleeding here. Like, if we put one of these on the Tridam, and then put one on the Ana, that's pretty good. And then, if we play the Aratusa to give charges, we can then give charges to the Shanis. And we've got a Mage, so we can do that on the turn that we play it. So I think our next play is going to be the Aratusa. I think we just have too much on the board, right? And Drega, you don't want that now. I mean, he's going to put on a lot of bleeding, but if we're countering the bleeding with Chani's, that's also really good. Okay, so let's play this. That's not quite what we wanted to pull, but never mind. Uh, so let's get rid of this. Get rid of this. Uh, give a charge to this. Do we want to boost this or do we want to cleanse? Maybe we cleanse more bleeding. Trigger this. Trigger this. End our turn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is kind of insane. And then we also have the Temerian Drummer. So we can then use that in order to boost something? Do we even need to boost something? I don't know. We've been another Drummer. We're kind of running out of space. That's our, our biggest concern here, is like, he's not really killing any of our units. The thing is, if the Gherkins, the Gherkins get too big, they're also then gonna um, get zapped by Yennefer. I mean, maybe we play Reynard, or we could play Black Rayla. Your deepest, darkest dreams, I can make them real. The problem is we can only really do one charge per turn. So this is currently boosting this. Hmm. Unless we play this here, then she's going to be boosted. And then she can boost the Tridam. It means we can't play Black Rayla this turn though. And this is also nine provisions and this is eight provisions. Okay, that's fine. So it won't pull another one of those. So let's do this. Her Majesty knows what she's doing. We got Priscilla. Oh, now we can add more charges. Okay, that's fine. Let's show him what real art is. And we may as well try and shrink the Oriana a wee bit. Even though, like, we're not in a great position for it. We are so far ahead. It might be at the we might be getting to the point where we could potentially pass. Cause this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points per turn at the moment yeah we're getting seven points per turn he's getting six points per turn and osril's not eating anything that's a two point osril you know oh there's another oriana okay that's a little bit scary we've also run out of space on the row the question is can he catch me in one turn like he's not got any more ways to apply bleeding so we're on 89 we oh we've got a lot of bleeding though so if we pass he's gonna be ahead isn't he because of all this bleeding because that's all gonna trigger do we have a good solution? If we play our leader ability, we don't have any purification, unfortunately. Well, we do. We have the vest, the, the Shani's, right? So we can cleanse some of these. 
Unless we pull another, if we pull another Priscilla. Can we boost Priscilla? How much space do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got no space on the board is the problem. Like if we play something, the board is full. But if we pass here, he's gonna win on even. No, I think we have to pass, unfortunately. The double Oriana is really nasty. Oh no, we're still ahead. <laughs> oh, but Oriana will trigger if he passes. I wonder if he realizes that though. So his Oriana will trigger. Because she boosts at the end of the turn, right? Boost uh, every ally turn on turn end. Boost self by the number of bleeding enemies, which is five. So he should get ten points. <laughs> we kind of ran out of space and he got double Oriana, which was pretty awkward. But I think we can still win this, even if he dry passes. Like, ugh, the space issue was annoying. And not being able to deal with the Orianas was kind of annoying. I think it's fine though. Visigoth is good. Um, we have something we can play this turn, which is also good. Do we keep the drummer? I'm gonna kick Fez. Kick the drummer. This double Visigoth. So if our opponent right passes, we'll just play a sergeant. He's used all of his leader ability though, and our leader ability gives us an extra card. Okay, he wants to play this turn. Interesting. So that's not good for him because obviously he's not giving anyone bleeding. So he only gets one copy when he plays that. So how much do we want to commit? If we play a Vyasagotti, he's just going to pass. But I think maybe we have to. Unless we play the Kidweni and then we get another unit that's four provisions if we get a tri dam that's what three four five six seven eight nine ten points puts us ahead by one Stand and fight. look at that well that worked and then we can play the drummer and get the infantry boosted um and then we get another drummer and then we can play the visigotha next to that and i think that's fine and Vyasagoth is still good on a short round as well. And Drega. So Nekarat. And so you can apply bleeding every so often. That's fine. So let's play a drummer. Left, right. And left, another drummer. Right. And our turn. So I don't know why he played into this round. I guess he thought that if we had a long round, we would he would lose because we have so many engines. And, you know, he's seen that we have a lot of engines. We still have leader on Selkirk or on Rayla as well. Uh, he doesn't have dominance. So, okay, now he has dominance. I mean, we could deny the dominance. I don't think I even care is the thing. Oh, he's got a cooldown though. I mean, I guess what we could do is we could play Selkirk, leader another Selkirk. Or, yeah, yeah, we could do that. Because we don't have a way of boosting him. Let's do this. No oh, never mind, I tell a lie. We can boost him like this. Discipline shall bring us victory. But he doesn't have zeal. Eh, I don't really hate it. Honestly. Let's do that. And then on the next one we can kill the Goliath and we would pull our highest unit from the deck, which we don't really need to do, but if we did would be Botchling, Rayla, something good, right? So, well, I guess we're killing the other Nithril. Okay, so he doesn't have any more of these in his, he's just trying to bleed me here. Hmm. I guess we'll just play one of these. Another battle. Another. I get really king on the front row. And then gets boosted. And then we kill this. And then end our turn. Oh, I've got to use my Visigoth charges. That's just BM. Jagoras, what are you doing? You're bullying the poor boy. Can we just pass here? I mean, I guess we can't because if he plays a card, he's going to play two cards. But I think he has a Goliath in hand. 
Because when he played the other Nithril, it didn't pull anything. So we, he's out of eight provision guards. So there's the pass. Okay. So we'll pass as well. Are we worried about him removing our Visigotta is our other question. And do we, we need to make sure we also have eight provision cards in deck, right? That's the other thing is you don't want to be in a situation where you can't pull anything. Well, we have Botchlings, which are eight provisions. Oh, bloody hell. Right, we haven't played two of these. That's eight provisions. That's eight provisions. We have another Francis. Vess is eight provisions. I really want Vess. Let's kick her. Tridam. Tridam's nice with Visigotta, to be honest. I don't hate it. Oh, we could do with a nine provision card. Francis is kind of bad in that, like, there's not that many turns left. Hmm. Let's play Black Rayla for now. And there's Francis. So let's play this. I think we're in a good position. How do we boost this? I guess we could play the Botchling. I mean, I'm wondering if it's worth playing Visigotta earlier. It doesn't have that much removal. So we play Visigotta, we pull something else. Eight provisions, maybe a Vez, maybe a... Oh, we needed nine provisions for Priscilla on the Neki, really. Like, we're in a slightly awkward position. Maybe another Francis. Let's just do it. Sometimes the price is too damn. Um, so we want to turn this into a Lubberkin. Let's boost this once. Might float this. I mean, I guess we're going to get charges for the Tridem anyway. We just want to deal damage, I think. Like, the Endragas are just going to do Endraga things. And yeah, we'll turn that into a Botchling. I guess we play Tridam, right? Because we want to boost him. Right, we don't have a nine yet. <laughs> so that's good for us. So let's do that. Oh, boosts, more boosts. We need to be a little bit cautious here. I actually um, don't want to boost this too high. Because obviously he's got the Geralt, which we know about. And then we'll boost our Kedweni. Protect this. Uh, shoot some more things. I think we're alright. Right? I think we're alright. I think he went too heavy in round one. We'll play the Botchling next. I mean, it could give us... It could give us... Well, it's probably going to give us a Priscilla. Not a Priscilla, a Vess. Right? I think we just float our charges. Oh, it gave us another Francis. Okay. Who do I spy? Just, oh, maybe I should have shot this for dominance, actually. No, it doesn't really matter. I think floating the charges is quite wise. Ow. I mean, does he have a Geralt? That's our question. If he has a Geralt, we do want to boost this. So we can transform these, which will protect them. We can uh, just spread these out a wee bit. If he's got a Geralt, we're playing around the Geralt, right? Even though we're losing value. I think it's fine. Like, we still have a lot of things happening every turn. That's the last three. Not enough, buddy. Not enough. Hey, we win! I like this deck. <laughs> it's such a nonsense deck to play. I actually really like the seasonal mode. I think it's a really fun one. And I like playing Northern Realm Orders in general. I think it's a really fun um, deck to play. So this gives us a great opportunity to play it. It's absolute nonsense, though. It's absolute nonsense. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for a good seasonal deck, then this is the one I recommend. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the season. If you have any suggestions or questions, you can let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, maybe leave a like on this video. And you can always subscribe to the channel for more Gwent content. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an awesome day, and hopefully I will catch you in the next video.
Oh, and you can find me on Twitter um, at Jagoras. And on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jagoras, although I don't stream very regularly.